Welcome to another virtual Nothing But The Word message presented by Pastor Dr. Gerald Parker Sr. being brought to you from Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church Ministries located at 1301 Magnolia Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. We encourage you to follow our motto where we say, let's do it God's way. And Mark the 11th chapter, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered that word and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thief hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now go to Mark 11, 20. Go to, go to verse 20. Because he spoke to the fig tree. But then verse 20 is the result. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. We find ourselves this morning back in the 11th chapter of Mark. Everybody say 11th chapter of Mark. And many of you might not understand this and might not know this, but Mark, the 11th chapter, all the way over to the 16th chapter, covers just one week of Jesus' life. Mark, the 11th chapter, all the way over to Mark, the 16th chapter, covers the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. Almost one-third of the Gospel of Mark is dedicated to the last week of Jesus here on earth in his earthly ministry. So some things took place in that last week as he was facing the cross. You, you were with me. You were with me a few weeks ago when he got on that donkey. You were with me. And he rode into Jerusalem. People were excited. And they cried, Hosanna. That Hosanna means save us. And I want to let you know that was a great time. As he rode in on that young country donkey, people were throwing down olive branches and clothes. And they said, Hosanna, Hosanna. And I have come to tell you here today that many of those people who cried, Hosanna, in just in a week time, they cried, crucify him. And so I've learned that uh, it's, it's okay to hear kind words, but I've learned this. Listen to the kind words and just say thank you, but I found this out. People will change on you in a minute. They will. They will. Jesus knew about that. And so after he went into Jerusalem, he went by the temple. To, then he went back to Bethany to visit Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And here we are now in Mark, the 11th chapter, praise God, verse 12, it says, and on the next day, after he had left Bethany, when they were come from Bethany, everybody say Bethany. I, I, I got to tell you this, I, I, I don't want to, uh, it's a reason why Mark tells us that Jesus had just left Bethany. Uh, everybody say Bethany. Bethany means house of figs. Bethany was on the eastern part of Jerusalem. Bethany was a, was a seventh journey, two miles from Jerusalem. Bethany was the home of Mary, yeah, and Martha and Lazarus. It was at Bethany uh, that Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave. 
I, can, I, can I tell you something here? Some of you have come in here in dead situations. Some of you have come in here saying it's over with, it's dead, it's through. But I've come to tell you that same Jesus who raised up a dead Lazarus from the grave. And guess what? He just called, he, he, he didn't do no hocus pocus. He just simply called dead Lazarus by his name. Oh yeah, I got to tell you, guess what? He knows your name too. And he knows where you are. And he just called Lazarus' name. Lord, help me go through this. And Lazarus rose from the grave. He once was dead. Now he's alive. That's what happened at Bethany. It was at Bethany uh, that uh, uh, a few days before Jesus would be crucified, Mary came in and anointed the head of Jesus and, and his feet. It was at Bethany, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus would visit Mary yeah, and Martha and Lazarus because uh, he would go there because he felt welcome in their home. Can I ask you another question since it's Mother's Day? They welcomed Jesus in their home. Look at me now. Is Jesus welcome in your home? Now, I know you're here at church. I know you're here. You got on your Sunday vest and you whatever you got it on here and, but but when you go to the house I, now he's here with us no doubt about that but is he welcome when you get to the house is he welcome when you shut the door and pull down the blinds and turn on the tv and kick off those shoes is he welcome then because i have found out that many people Shout about Jesus on Sunday, but when they get to the house, they're ready to curse each other out. Is he welcome in your house? Because uh, when you when you come to your house, he's in charge. When he comes to your house, there, sh there should be some television programs you should not view. When he comes to your house, there are some conversations that should not be said. Is he welcome in your house? And so the scripture says Jesus stayed there. He, uh, and, and then it says here, and he entered in Jerusalem and into the temple. And then, but verse 12 says, on the next day, when they were come from Bethany. So he stayed all night at Bethany with, with, with Martha and Mary and Lazarus, got through eating. But the scripture says here, when he left Bethany that morning, he was hungry. Hungry? He had just left. Martha and Mary, and every time that he would go to Bethany, they would feed him well. But this morning, he was hungry. And this proved to us that Jesus was human. I got to say, he was hungry. I want you all to see this. The same Jesus who took a few fish and bought the loaves and fed 5,000 men, not including the women and the children, was hungry. Jesus, who a few chapters later fed the 4,000 with just a few fish and loaves, he was hungry. Jesus, who declared that he was the bread of life and declared that he was the bread from heaven, he was hungry. Jesus, the, the Magdalene Lamb of God, Jesus, the, the King of Kings, Jesus, the Lord of Lords, our Jesus was hungry. And this proved to us that he was hungry human. We learned of the last week that Jesus was God and he was human. I, I got to say this now, that Jesus was so human until Jesus took a bath. And one thing I got to say about Jesus, he made sure while he was hanging on the cross, dying for your sins and mine. He looked down and saw his mother crying and looked over and saw John, his disciple. And at that moment, he put Mary with John and John with Mary to make sure that when he died, she would be taken care of. I got to say this now. While mother is alive, do all you can for mother. I, I don't understand this. I, got to, I don't understand. How is it? How is it that, that, that one mother can take care of eight kids. Yeah, I'm going to help them. How is it that one mother who's single sometimes uh, will take care of eight kids, and then when mother is down, eight kids can't take care of mother? 
do what you can for mother while she is alive. Tell her you love her. Give her some change. Help her out. Give her a hug. Tell her you love her because mother won't be with you always. And not only that, mother might not be with you always. You might not be with mother, but just for a short time. Make sure you take care of mother. He saw a fig tree. It was far off. And there was leaves on the fig tree. He said, yes, now since there's leaves on that fig tree, obviously there's some figs with the leaves. And so what he did, he finally walked over to the fig tree. And to his disdain, guess what happened? He, our master was hungry, and surely these figs could satisfy his hunger. But when he got there, when he got there to the tree expecting figs, the scripture says it was just leaves. It was a pretty tree. It gave out a lot of shade. He didn't want a shade. He wasn't looking for beauty. He was looking for fruit from the fig tree. And there was none. He, he found nothing on the tree, and because of that, he cursed the tree and said this word to the tree, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. No man will ever eat fruit from you hereafter forever. Now, I got to say that I'm about to get happy. How is it that Jesus could talk to a tree? He knew tree talk. He, 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 he spoke to the tree with his words, and the tree understood. And the reason why I, think, I thought this was powerful, because there is power in the word of the Lord. He spoke to the tree. He, he just stood there and spoke to the tree and said, from this day forward, nobody will eat fruit from you forever. He could speak to the tree because there's power in the word of God. And believe it or not, I've come to tell you here, if you go back to Genesis 1 and 1, you read where it says, in the beginning was the word. And God, cre God created the heaven and the earth. But someone said, how did God create the heaven and the earth? Well, I've got to tell you, that word God is Elohim. And the word Elohim means three strong ones, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And when you read John 1 and 3, you read where uh, nothing was created except from the word. When you read Colossians 1 and 15 says, nothing was made that was made had it not been for Jesus. How did he do it? He spoke with his word. And so guess what? He spoke with his word and trees came into existence because he is the creator. He is the creator. So when that tree did not produce fruit, he had the right to speak to that tree. Because he said, I'm the same Lord that spoke and you came into existence. And I made you to be a fig tree and you're supposed to be producing fruit. All oh, you look, you look pretty, you look good, but I come here for fruit. There is no fruit. And because of that, from this day forward, you are going to die. You have, you have, you have, you are, you are not producing your purpose. I purpose you to produce fruit. This is the lesson, right? Here. This is the lesson. And if you go to verse 20, the next day, the disciples came back and the tree had withered down. It was gone. It was killed. From the roots down, it was devastated because of the word of Jesus. Now, this is it. Now, let's take this barren fig tree and apply it to our lives. You say you're a Christian, but where is your fruit? You say you, you say you got a cross around your neck? That's just leaves. You, you say you say you say you've got you've got work clothes and you got church clothes and, 
and you got on your good church clothes, I'm, I'm dressed for church. You can be dressed for church and you might look good, but dressed for church and looking good on Sunday, that's just leaves. You say, well, I, 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 I sing in the choir. Every Sunday I sing in the choir and I sing hard until I sweat. I practice on Tuesday, but if you look at it, it looks, you sound good, but just because you sing, that simply leaves. I hold a position in church, and, and when I walk around, people respect me. That's just leaves. I come to tell you here today, my brothers and sisters, God don't want leaves. He wants fruit. You say, I'm a child of God. If you're a child of God, then where is your fruit? You see, the wages of sin is death. And if you don't show any fruit, I don't care how, you know what? It's, we do all that can to look good and look pretty. Don't get me wrong now. I, I got this white suit on there, you know, and I found it in the closet there, and I put it on and tried to match up. But this ain't nothing but leaves. It's just leaves. It's just something to look at. But where is your fruit? And I've come to tell you, we got churches. We got churches that, that, that's active and churches that have ministries and churches that do this. But all that activity is nothing but leaves if there is no fruit. Look at me now. Look at me. Where is your fruit? So what he did was he condemned that tree. That tree did not fulfill its purpose leaves advertised that there was figs on it but when he got there there was no fruit someone said well why would he be so mean why did he curse the tree because why did, why did you grow leaves if there was no fruit and he wanted to make sure that this tree would not fool anybody else. It's not what you do. It's why you're doing it. If you're not doing it because you love the Lord, that there's no fruit. If you, if you, I don't care how good you do. I don't care how much you, you witness. I don't care what you do. But if you're not doing it for God to get the glory, it's just leaves. Don't worry about what people see. You got to make sure that you have fruit. Everybody say fruit. There are a lot of churches that just, just, just a big old leaf, just a big old leaf. Got a lot of activity. Got a lot of, that was one church in Ephesus in Revelation, the second chapter. That, that church in Ephesus was some kind of church. It was a growing church. It was a big church. It, 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 it believed in doctrine. It was a great church. They believed in, in, in doctrine. They lived holy. But Jesus said, I have something against you. And what I got against you, your leaves look good, but you've left, you've lost your first love. You're doing all this stuff, but there's no fruit of love. You got to love me. Can I tell you right now, whatever you're doing, if you're not doing it because you love the Lord, it is, it's nothing but leaves. In St. Luke, the 13th chapter, Jesus talked about another barren fig tree. This fig tree was barren. He cursed it, and it died. But I've got some hope for you. Because when you go over to second, uh, Luke, the 13th chapter, praise God, verse 6 through 9, you see another barren fig tree. Both fig trees were barren, but this fig tree, the other fig tree, was killed and cursed. But this fig tree was spared. And so Jesus tells a story here in Mark, in St. Luke, the 13th chapter, verse 6. He said, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none then said he unto the dresser of the, his vineyard behold these three years i've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none cut it down why 
cumbereth it the ground. It's, it's no doing no good. I put this fig tree in this vineyard, and now it's no producing fruit. And I've come three years in a row and no fruit. All it's doing is sucking up the nutrients from the other, other trees. I put it in the vineyard. I gave it the best soil. I gave it everything I've got. And I've been here three years in a row and no fruit. So then what he did, what he told the vine dresser, cut it down. It's no good for me and nobody else. Cut it down. But then the vine dresser, the gardener, looked at the man and said, I know the tree haven't really produced any fruit, but Lord, if you don't mind, give the tree another chance. Give it another chance. Let it last one more year. And while it's lasting one more year, maybe I can put fertilizer under it. Maybe I can, I can spruce it. Maybe I can do some things that would cause it to grow. But after one more year, if it's not producing fruit, then cut it down. I'm closing, y'all. This is a parable. That man that owned that fig tree and put it in the vineyard represents God who, who, who created us and put us in a vineyard. It, it represents God and that vineyard, yes, sir, represents blessing. It represents grace. It represents all the good things of life. And what God requires of us, since he blessed us and put us in a vineyard of blessings and grace and mercy, surely we can produce fruit. We can bear fruit, but there was no fruit. So what he did was he went, he went to the gardener. And the gardener, uh, he said, gardener, which represents Jesus. And I've come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, justice, yes, says, when you are not bearing fruit, the justice of God says you need to be cut down. But I thank the Lord for grace and mercy. Had it not been for grace and mercy, where would we be? And the vine dresser said, well, Lord, he called him, Lord, if you don't mind, if you, I know this is your tree, but if you don't mind, let the tree last just one more year. Give the tree another chance. And maybe in this year I can fertilize it and maybe I can dig around it and just maybe I can do some things that cause the tree to bear fruit. But after one year, if the tree still does not bear fruit, then it's all right to cut it down. You should have been dead and gone. But the Lord has given you another chance. Another chance to repent. Another chance to bear fruit. Another chance to witness. Another chance to change uh, your area and ways. And it, I, I've come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, do you remember when you were close to death? Somebody know what I'm talking about. You were close to death and you thought you were dead. But the Lord said, Lord, give this person another chance. And I've come to tell you, you ought to thank God today. Thank God that he's given all of us another chance. We all are living on borrowed time. I said we all are living on borrowed time. This is the day that the Lord has made. Tomorrow is not promising anybody, but I'm so glad today he's given all of us, all of us another chance. And since he's given us another chance, there's some things we ought to do. We ought to tell that person that we have mistreated. We ought to tell them that we are sorry. 
We need to do, we need to tell someone to forgive us. The Lord has given us another chance. We all are just like barren fig trees. But thanks be to God, you just don't know when your last day is. And if I were you today, I'd turn away from my sins and turn to Jesus. You need to come now while the blood's running warm in your veins. Thank God for the barren fig tree. But I'm thinking now of another tree. I said, I'm thinking now of another tree. I'm thinking now of another tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was, but First Peter 2 and 24 said that Jesus hung on a tree for your sins and mine. He hung there and shed his blood on a tree. And thanks be to God, my brothers and sisters, when he died, he died for your sin and mine. Thank God for the tree. Don't worry about your leaves now. Turn to Jesus Christ and the tree of life. And he died for your sins and mine. I'm so glad that he died. Somebody said, well, pastor, wait a minute now. Every Sunday when you stand up, you talk about Jesus dying on the cross. But I've come to tell you, there is no gospel without Jesus. There is no gospel without the cross. There is no gospel without the blood. There is no gospel without Jesus' death. And there is no gospel about Jesus raising from the grave. And I've come to tell you, praise God, he rose from the grave with all power and heaven and earth in his hands. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And one day we shall see him face to face. I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't want to be like a barren fig tree. I don't want to be like Adam and Eve when they sinned in the garden. The scripture says they found out they were naked and they took of, of they took fig leaves and covered their bodies because they were trying to hide their sins. Whatever you do, get rid of those leaves and, and bear fruit for Jesus Christ. I don't know how you feel about it, but you all said, thank you, Jesus. You all said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for one more day. We all said, thank you, Jesus, for one more day. He's brought us from a mighty long way. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. You've given us another chance. 